Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, yeah, what a beautiful day. Nice and hot. Can I get an amen on that? Nice amen. If I turn that air conditioner off, you don't know what's going on. No, it sure is good to be back home. Sherry and I, uh, I want to thank you for your prayers. Uh, I'm sure most of you know that I had a death in my family. And uh, so Sherry and I ran over to Texas for the funeral. And uh, very difficult, of course, because of uh, the suddenness of it. There was no warning. And uh, my, my loved one was only 47 years of age. And uh, died immediately of a massive heart attack. But uh, we got to see some folks that we've not seen in many, many years. And, uh, you know, if we will allow God, He will turn a, in our flesh when we're hurting a horrible situation unto His glory. And He did that in this situation. But it's good to be back home, and I'll tell you, be thankful to the Lord. He provides a lot of rain in our area because Port, the state of Texas, it is dry. And they got a water ban on. You can't water your yard, can't wash your car. You can't do anything with water except take a bath. Bless them people's heart. I'm going to be praying that the good Lord is going to bring some rain to the great state of Texas. Do you love the Lord this morning? Yes. The Bible says, and this deals with what you and I are going to be doing in part in the millennial reign or what is referred to as the kingdom age, the thousand year millennial reign of Christ on this earth. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah would tell us this over 2,750 years ago. He tells us this. And in that day, meaning the millennial reign, O oh Lord, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is also, he also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, praise the Lord. You shall call upon his name. You shall declare his doings among all the people. And you will make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he has done excellent things that is known in all the earth. Cry out loud and shout. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of you. You see, this is in the physical what's going to happen when Jesus Christ is personally ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. Amen. Oh, the church today. You see, the new covenant tells us that he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, shall I be in the midst of them. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We know the book of Psalms tells us that he does inhabit the praises of his people. So, the good Lord is here in our midst. Amen? Amen. Because we are gathered in his name. Are you ready to worship him this morning? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you for your many, many blessings. But Lord, mostly we thank you for who you are. Lord, that you are a loving God. You are a God of righteousness. You are a God that will never forsake us. And you loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus, to go to that cross, to shed his innocent, beautiful, wondrous, crimson stream of blood that we all might be saved, all those who believe. And we thank you for that, Lord, this morning, that we are your church, we are your children, we are your saints. And we are here just to worship you, to exhort you, and to draw closer to you this morning. Father, you know every need in this house. You know every need of those who are watching, wherever in the world they may be. And Lord, we just ask you, as we open up our hearts, Lord, we just want you to fill us up. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all the saints said, Amen. 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 Let's stand for a feet this morning. You know,
know, we, we get out and pray sometimes. I don't know about you, but it happens to me. My mind would just go blank. I, you know, I can't think of the right words to express how I feel. But we'll just begin to praise Him and worship Him. It'll happen. Amen. Amen. Right. We'll begin to feel the right. Feel blessed. Amen.
witnessed it that year. Tell it, tell it. it was started in our singing, and believe it or not, once we wanted to hear him real bored, we didn't get to preach. That's right. right. It was one of them runaways. We <laughs> had time. I wrote that for several days. Yeah. <laughs>
need is, take it to him right now. He's worthy. Whatever your need is, take it to him. Take it to him. Worship him, church. Don't look at me. Look to God. I can't help you. I can't help you, but I know the one who can. Just go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. I'm going to say it again. Go to Jesus.
when we're mourning, oh God, you come in, you rush in, and the oil of joy flows. It will only open up our heart unto you. You want to pour in that new wine. You want to pour in that fresh supply that never ends. It will never run dry. Lord, for the barrel of meal did not waste. The cruise of oil did not fail. It didn't then and it won't now. Oh, Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ. That's right. 
And then he turned around and the Holy Spirit came into the situation. Hallelujah. But while I was sitting there, the power of the Holy Ghost came into that prison. Yes. And it said he breathed. The chain was still off. Hallelujah. We need to connect to that power. Yes. Right. I sat there and watched a, a guy hooked to a train. And he was checking the lights on me. And the Lord spoke to me. And he said, until that power hits that light, there's no light. <clears throat> so we've got to get to the place that we can connect to the power. Right, the power is the source of Jesus Christ. Yes. Where He died for us. Yes. He didn't go there just to sit down. and <clears throat> uh, He could have just turned around and not done anything. But He loved us so much. God said, I love the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son. And in that, He said, if we believe upon Him, we shall not perish but have everlasting life. Right. And I got to a place that I sat down myself. <clears throat> I got in that place. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know which way I was going. But thank God He didn't turn me on this. <clears throat> we got to get the junk out of our way to touch the power. That's right. That's right. Everything between here and heaven, we got to move it. That's right. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're doing. But if you begin to raise your voice and begin to lift it up yes. to heaven, uh, then uh, all of this junk will go. Uh, yeah, you're going to have problems. You're going to have things. But if you start remembering, the one you got to speak to is the one that's in heaven. Amen. He's not just there. He's with us right now. That's right. He walks with us. He talks to us if we only let him. Amen. That power, he showed me that light. And he began to show me until that current comes to that light. There is no power to it. We got to have the current coming from heaven yes, to us. Yes, yes. Then we got to send it back to Him and let Him heal us. We can't do it. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how you're going through it. But as I see it while ago, the Lord showed the light as it came in. The angel came down and he touched Peter and told him to get up. Yes, 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 yes. He's telling us today to get up. Yes, yes. Don't stay in your problem. Don't stay uh, down and you can't look to see. When you get your natural eyes on your problem, you're losing out. Take your natural eyes off the problem and look to the one that can give you the answer to the problem. For he is the healer. Yes. He is the mighty healer. Yes. I let things get in my way and I got down, I got pulled down, and now I'm looking to the one that can heal. That's it. Man. The one that can heal, He gave all His life for us. Amen. He shed His blood for us. Yes. And that blood is still that healing of our soul. Yes. It's got to run through our veins. It's got to run through our heart. He'd like to look to Him for He is the healer. Yes. <clears throat> no matter what it is. No matter what trouble you're going through, He is the healer. He is the power. He is the strength. Yes, He is. Just as that angel come in and He touched Him, the chain fell off. Nobody could see what was going on. For the light shut everything out. The darkness could not comprehend the light. None of us can. If we're in our sin, we cannot comprehend the light. But when we come to Him, the light will show us. It will show us the path. Yes. Don't look to the left or the right, but look to Him. For yes. He is the answer. Uh, he is the mighty answer. Yes. And no one else can help you except Him. Right. Right. God will send you people and, and those that are right and those that are walking with God, He will send you somebody to help turn you around. i got a good friend of mine. He began to say something to me yesterday about it. He took his eyes off of God. And he had laid there paralyzed one day. He said, you think God leaves you? He don't leave you. He said he would. He never forsake you. And then we the one that turned around and walked away from him. That's right, that's right. But he laid there on that bed. And they began to talk. He couldn't move anything on him. But the power of God hit him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. He was paralyzed totally. All he could move with his eyes and his ears. He could hear. He couldn't even speak. 
God healed him on his right side. And he spoke Lord. a word to him. Glory. He got up a layer. And he's going through, still going through some things. But God's still teaching. Just like he'll teach us. <clears throat> Ooh, we can't stay in that prison. That's right. We can't let us get down and buy, get bound up in our problem. But I'm telling you, from my experience, you can get bound up so bad that you can't even walk. You can't even chew gum at the same time you're trying to walk. But let you let me tell you, if you get tied to the power that you need to be tied to, then nothing can stop you. Right. We get connected to him. He said, by his stripes, we are healed. He didn't say we're going to be healed. He said we are healed. We need to remember that. We need to remember the healer. You can lay down, you can turn over, you can do whatever you want to do. Stay in your misery. I'm talking to myself. I got three more of these fingers pointing me. We can stay down, and I remember he got brought us a message back to me. When I was up here in that church up there. The Brother McManus oh, brother to Brother Jack McManus. He came in and he began to preach a message on combat boots. Let me tell you, you get down, all you got to do is reach and grab a hold of them strings on that combat boot to pull yourself up and look under him. For he gives you the power through him, through the Holy Ghost. Don't stay in your problem. Let God help you. Let God walk with you every step of the way. I'm saying this from experience because I let myself get down until he brought that message back to me. Get a hold of them combat boots. God, man teaches you in, in war how to fight war. <clears throat> he sets you up and he gets your mind regulated to where you you go. And you don't fear what you're going to. That's the way he sets your mind. The, the military sets your mind to know that when you go into that war, you forget about everything else. Because you're going to go out there and you may not make it back except for the power of God. So as long as we walk with the Lord and we have His power, we can go through anything. Sure. Let that power connect you. Let that power. I don't know why I needed to say it. I know what He gave me yesterday was for me. But I just couldn't get away from it this morning. And then he showed me the power that walked through that prison and shook the chains. Opened the door and they walked out with nobody touched. Even when he got out, when he went to the door of John's house, Mark, surname was John. When he went to that house, he knocked on that door. Keep knocking, brother. Don't stop knocking. He knocked on that door. He kept knocking. Rhoda heard his name. And she would not open the door. What she do? She went and told the church. And they told her that she was mad. But when she finally convinced them, they went to that door. It wasn't his spirit. It was him. That God sent there. We laid in the stone. And he was gone. He didn't know where he was at. He didn't give nobody where he was <coughs> But when Satan comes in, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And let me tell you, he will do it if you let him. He will destroy you for everything you want. But he forgets about the thing you want. We turn back to him. We call on you say, there ain't nothing you can do. So let God, let God touch you in your problem. And let him help you. Let him help you. For he sent us back to the comfort. He sent us back. The Holy Spirit with us today. Yes, so let him Hold on. It's like a lake. I had the issue of blood. She 
you reached and touched the hem of his garment, you need to reach and get off the garment. That's right. And hold on. And if you go, good heaven, both. Thank you, Brother Earl. Church, what a mighty God we serve. And at times, throughout our days and weeks, if we're not careful, we can get so focused on that mountain in front of us. But I know who blows up mountains. And that's the blood of Jesus. If our faith is anchored correctly, it may take a while. Sometimes it don't happen overnight. Sometimes we get ourselves into problems overnight. And the Lord, He can untangle anything. He can make the crooked path straight, just like that. But again, throughout the trial and tribulation, we get what that was that sign of learning to lean, learning to lean on Jesus. So throughout that trial, the Holy Spirit is pointing us to Christ and Him crucified. Pointing us to Christ and Him crucified. Have your faith totally anchored in the finished work of the Lord. And throughout that, you see, Satan is going to play with your mind. God deals with the heart of man. And you better make sure you know the difference. God deals with the internal man, the spirit of man. That's what really reaches out to God. It's not mental affirmation or mental confirmation. No, that's what's wrong with too many churches today. They try to intellectualize God. They try to reach him through education. Don't get me wrong. Education is important. The work of study to show thyself approved under God. Yes, we study the word of God. But church, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And it's not changed. We may have changed, but God doesn't change. He said, I'm the Lord, I change not. And that power, that current, that fire... It's still as hot as it was on the day of Pentecost. It will only surrender. Amen. Thank you, Prince Tim. Thank you, Brother Earl. And this Brother Fletcher testified at the beginning of the service. Wednesday night was a service of services. Um, you know, as preachers, we... We can't plan that stuff. I know some Pentecostal preachers have tried in the past. <laughs> Try to simulate the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how many times over the years I even mentioned this. I think last Sunday, how many Pentecostal preachers have laid their head on my hand and tried to push me to the ground. That's not Pentecost. That's flesh. But I'll tell you Wednesday night, as Brother Fletcher indicated, Brother Board didn't get to preach. He didn't get to teach. He had a planned message, a planned teaching. And the Holy Spirit said, uh-uh, son. Uh-uh. And the Lord had a greater purpose for the service Wednesday night. And as, as I told the church Wednesday night, that was a true rest and refreshing. He talked, it, it stuck with you. That's what a refreshing does. That you get refreshed. And that's exactly what happened Wednesday night. And I'm still feeling the effects today as we went to Texas and, and uh, had to be there a couple days. Um, tell you what, that, that sustained me. And uh, we give the Lord the praise and the glory. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning at the very first verse. We're going to read down through the seventh verse. First Corinthians chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. Very familiar passage of Scripture, but it is an area where we must make sure that we're in alignment with the will of the Father. Because this word, love, is probably misused more than any other word in the languages of the world. If you haven't saved, then. 1 
1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. Let me stop real quick. Every time you see the word charity in this chapter, you can replace it in your mind with the word love. Because in the Greek, this was just an unfortunate translation of the King James folks. Charity, it should have been translated love because the same Greek word was used in this chapter as John 3.16. And John 3.16 doesn't say for God so charity the world. It said no, for God so love the world. But anyway, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I and become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and I have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Love vaunts not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And right there in verse 8, first three words, love never fails. Now go down to verse 13. And now, meaning right now, abides faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is. What a beautiful, beautiful passage of Scripture, church. And <clears throat> let me turn for a minute here. <clears throat> I want to use for a title subject this morning. Love without dissimulation. Love without Dissimulation. Dissimulation. Let us pray. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you for your spirit. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, that we can open it up. Draw closer to you by understanding your nature, your relationship to us through your word. And the spirit of truth is in the house. The spirit of truth links our heart to your word, that we may understand we are the body of Christ. And Lord, let us just learn to love a little bit more like you love today. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. amen. Love without dissimulation. The word dissimulation is one of them $2 words, I call them, you know, one of them fancy words. I have to be careful because it's in the Word of God. <laughs> we studied this Word months ago on a Wednesday night Bible study because it's in Romans chapter 12. The Apostle Paul would say, let love be without dissimulation. What in the world is the Word of God trying to tell us? Then, and now, if you look the Greek meaning of dissimulation, it reads this way. It speaks of mankind, humanity, wearing a mask. Wearing a mask. And I'm not talking about a costume mask, or God forbid, that God forsaken COVID mask. That's not what I'm talking about. In the Greek, it speaks of 
when you and I talk to people, do we have a mask on? Do they have a mask on? Are we really abiding in what the Bible says, let your yes be yes and your no be no, or are you being deceitful? Are you being honest and forthright, letting your yes be yes and your no be no, or do you have an angel? Mm. Got a quiet here. And this simulation, let me give you an example. If I could, a silly one popped in my head. Who am I going to pick on? Ron. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> that dear brother likes to fish. I do too, but I'm not as good a fisher. <laughs> Maybe there's a lot of us in here like to fish. But anyway, fishing is not a sin. Peter, John, and others, man, they like, but Peter and Andrew, they like to fish. They made their living at it. God gave us fish, so I'm just prefacing that Ronnie is not sinning. The brother's not sinning when he goes to fish. But Ronnie is practicing deception when he fishes. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> I knew it was now, when I say deception, I'm not talking about Ronnie catching a fish and then telling me, man, I caught a whopper, Pastor. That's not what I'm talking about being deception. I'm talking about between him and the fish. You see, Brother Ronnie doesn't catch fish with an empty hook. He don't throw an empty hook in there and de 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 He'd be sitting there a long time. But he presents a bait of some type, a lure of some type. That's why it's called a lure. To lure them in. That's why it's called a lure. And this poor fish is swimming along, sees that bait, and says, oh boy, here's lunch. Here's lunch. Ah! Grabs a hold of it. Uh-oh. Poor little fish gets hooked, gets pulled up, and then he realizes, uh oh, I ain't getting lunch, I am lunch. <laughs> and that's where, by the way, we get that phrase, bait and switch, by the way. So you're presenting something that's not real. In other words, to that fish. He's thinking lunch. <clears throat> oh, and that may be a silly analogy. That's what the world's doing. If you had the stomach to watch <clears throat> the Chicago convention this week, this past week, you must have an iron stomach. I watched some of it. And what I saw again and again and again during this convention, you see, this $2 word, dissimulation, in English means hypocrisy. It means hypocrite. I saw that dissimulation on full view in Chicago. I quote real quick. I'm running out of time. Brother Earl preached my message. Thank you for doing that, by the way. Let me give you just one example of that lovely convention. They became obsessed with the other party with their billionaires and millionaires. I heard that over and over and over and over. That they're not for the working man. They're not for the little guy. They're for billionaires and corporate millionaires. Over and over. That was a mantra. And then who do they truck out on stage? Millionaires and billionaires. Oprah Winfrey. That's just one example.
example, one of the most wealthiest women in the world. And what does she do? I can't even do it. We got joy! We got joy! And she went on and on and on. And we got joy in the party now. In other words, bait and switch. Lady, without God, there is no joy. Come on, man. You may be a billionaire and you may have superficial temporal happiness. I'll give you that. But without the blood of Jesus, there is no joy. Amen. We read it today from the book of Isaiah to begin the service. In the millennial reign, joy comes from the Lord. Right there in black and white. And don't tell me. Even the song that we sing around Christmas time. Joy to the Lord. For the Lord has come. Or joy to the world. For the Lord has come. Now there's joy to the world. Because why? The Lord has come. That's why. And I watched as much as I could. And I said, oh Lord, I'm going to start sinning. I got to click with this. So I watched as much as I could. Still able to eat my dinner. <laughs> but church, this is where the world is at. It is counterfeit. You see, that's why it's illegal. Why is it illegal to counterfeit money? You think about that for a minute. Why is it illegal? Is that a stupid question, Pastor? I'll tell you why. Because it would devalue and crush our nation. If I could print counterfeit money and not have to go work for it, then everybody would do it. And if everybody's doing it, before you know it, we're broke. In other words, the only thing that's good is to start a fire with. And let me tell you, that's what I'm giving you an analogy right there of counterfeit love coming from people that use that word over and over and over and that's why we're a mess we're in because it's not agape love. It's not from God. It's counterfeit. Oh, what the apostle is talking about here and what he said in Romans. Let love be without dissimulation. Meaning without hypocrisy. Meaning as he goes through a litany in the book of First Corinthians, oh man, I might be able to speak in tongues. Glory to God, I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. Woohoo! And yet, and I have not love. I'm just a sounding brass and a tinkling symbol of God. In other words, empty nothings. It's all for show. It's flesh. It means nothing to God. In other words, I might, it'd be like me. You see, to a trained person, he can, man, it's the only thing I turn on. No, uh, uh, my buddy over there, man, he ba ba boom, 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 and make the sound sound wonderful. Me, I'd ding, 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 and that's what it would be like calling yourself a Christian with no love. Those two cannot coexist. And the word of God is telling us here, oh, but I operate in spiritual gifts. I have to get the prophecy. And I understand mysteries. Boy, God, throughout the ages, has spoken to me and revealed things to me. Yeah, right. That's what Paul is saying, baloney. Now, all knowledge. And man, I got a mountain of faith that I can move those mountains. Man, I don't have childlike faith. Man, I am a faith person. Without love, it is nothing. Amen. Absolutely.
absolutely nothing. True love. A God by God given love. You see, I might get loud every once in a while. But we love you. We love you. And you were talking about mountains and and the take it to God. Again, I went to, my wife and I went to Texas to a family funeral. I've not seen many of my family members, extended family members, for over 12 years. And my cousin, 47 years of age, dies of a massive heart attack Monday morning. 47 years of age. No underlying conditions that we know of. Autopsies have been done. First autopsy didn't show nothing. They're waiting on the second autopsy. And I'm going there, and the, it, it, it was strange to me that I've not seen these people, like I said, over a dozen years. Seems like nobody gets together anymore except at a funeral, Brother Fletcher. But in death, unless your heart has been hardened to the point where it, where it feels nothing, when you go to a funeral, you're going to feel something. You're going to feel something. Oh, and I saw even the pastor that preached the funeral said, I've never preached a funeral of this many people. It's a big funeral home, and it was basically packed. Family members and non-family members. But I saw. I saw something. I saw love. I saw the glory of God being exhibited through some folks. That the Bible says we weep when they weep and we rejoice when they rejoice. There was a true, true embrace. And I was just sitting there thanking the Lord all throughout the service. My heart broken in one respect, weeping for the immediate family, a wife and a daughter 14 years old. Lost her dad. That part shattered, weeping, but rejoicing when the pastor began to talk about some of my cousin's texts. I didn't know this about my cousin. He said thread after thread over the years to the pastor. He said, Pastor, please pray for so and so. Please pray for so and so. Please pray for so and so. Again and again and again. You don't do that unless you believe in who you're praying to. And that family member did that for many, many years. I never knew it. But again, I saw a family come together in love. In other words, there was a reconciliation. A reconciliation. In true love, and I'm not saying every family is going to hug and, and call each other on the phone. No families are alike, okay? There's, I understand that. There's things that have been done in the past, maybe. And I'm not saying that you've got to go run down the street and hug your loved one. If there is something there, that's not what pastors say. But you better love them. The Bible says even pray for your enemies. The Bible says pray for your enemies, those that despitefully use you, and pray for that loved one. You see, you're turning it over to God. When you pray, you're turning that over to the Lord. Whatever that issue may be, whether it's in your life or somebody else's life, Lord, that mountain is there. I can't move it. Oh, what'd you say? But I know a man who can. And that's what Paul. Give me a couple more minutes, please. Yeah. 
It envies not. It doesn't bond itself up. In other words, you know, we don't brag. It's not about us. It's about him. That's who we brag on. In other words, when we get around loved ones or whoever it may be, we're not, it's all about me. Whether it be in a men's fellowship or in this church or at your job, wherever it may be, it's not about you. We're trying to point people to him. Amen. 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 That's what we're doing. That's what the church is here to do. To point mankind that are being lied to by people that have a mask on that say joy that come with me and you'll be joyful when they're pushing them off a mountainside. And they don't see it because they're blind because they have masks on as well because they're not looking to Christ. Therefore, they do not have wisdom. They do not have spiritual discernment. And they will just go like that fish does. Oh, that looks good. Let me take a bite. And that's then all hell breaks loose in their life. But love is not easily provoked. In other words, it, it, it goes on here. Bears all things. Bears all things. I'm not going to sit there and complain and complain and complain and complain and complain again if I truly love someone. The agape love given to you and I, God is not sitting there complaining. The Lord went to Calvary when people had whooped him, spit upon him, stripped him naked, cussing at him, casting lots for his garments. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And a man right beside him, guilty, just like you and I are guilty, was born again when he said, Lord, remember me. Lord, Remember me. And so in this life that we're living, in this process of sanctification, we have got to allow the Holy Spirit to conform us. And if we will go to the cross, if you will, spiritually, every day by faith, meaning the blood is applied daily to our lives, our faith is anchored there in the cornerstone, in the foundation which is Christ in Him crucified, the Holy Spirit will continue to develop the fruit of the Spirit in our life. Amen. And the very first one is love. In Galatians 5, 22 and 23, is love. And Paul says, and this may sting a little bit, Rejoice is not in iniquity. Verse 6. Meaning it doesn't gossip about the misdeeds of others. Well, let me get on that phone because I saw this guy out here with another woman that's not his wife. And so I got to go tell everybody, Jerry. Mm, not quite, did it? That's none of your business. Did you hear what I said? Amen. That is none of your business. And that's what Paul is trying to tell us here. He doesn't gossip about that. You know what you do? Pray. Pray. Well, because we don't know what's really going on anyway. But once something gets started, before you know it, Sister Marion... What do they say? They made a mountain out of a molehill. It starts at something, Brother Les. And before you know it, it's huge. He says, don't rejoice in their iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. That is Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life is the Lord. That's what I'm going to rejoice in. I'm going to rejoice in Him. His salvation. His redemption. His healing. His manifestations. His Spirit that flows through us. Oh, He's the one that's the repair of relationships. He's the one that restores. Our faith is in Him. Allowing that love to flow. 
allowing that love to flow no matter what no matter what love is not going to give up hopes all things and there it goes the last three words in verse 7 endures all things how much has God had to endure from you not quite again I know he's had to put up with a lot from this guy. Endures all things. Meaning he's long suffering. Oh, aren't you so thankful that the kind of God we serve is merciful and long suffering, Brother Fletcher? What if it was three strikes and you're out? You see book of Luke speaks of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Does that apply to you? Don't say yes or no. Do you really treat others as you would like them to treat you? I'm just going to let you still on that. Do we? Without the love of God, you won't do it. Without the control of the Holy Spirit in our constant life, in living, you and I are incapable of it. Because it'll be counterfeit. You'll be wearing a mask. I'm not talking about, hey, how you doing? When inside you're like, I can't stand you. That's a mask. That's a mask. And the church cannot have it. The Holy Spirit speaking to us this morning. He said, no matter what it is, surrender it to the Lord. Allow the Holy Ghost to move in in His love, not yours. That's where we make the mistake. I'm going to force myself. Oh, I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on my relationship with my husband. I'm going to work on that relationship with my wife. And I've got this big, long program and I'm watching these marriage counselors. Yeah, go marriage. But if you don't put Christ first, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have problems. You hear me at home? I don't care what your financial situation is, you might, you might be married to the most handsomest guy like Elvis Presley. I don't care. Even he got divorced. He had problems. The world is full, and you don't know Christ. As your personal Lord and Savior, true love is not flowing through you. Amen. Because God is love. God is love. It all comes through Him. Last point. Verse 13. And now, meaning before the resurrection, you see, right now, abides faith, hope, love, these three. They will abide forever, church. Faith, hope, love. But again, the apostle is telling us love is the greatest. Because love, true love, God agape love, flowing through you. You will, I will, if it's His love flowing through us, it means it's coming from the Holy Ghost, and you're giving the Holy Ghost more control of your life because your faith is anchored in Jesus Christ. And before you know it, if motivation is real by love, everything else is going to change. It has to. Now that don't mean, I'm talking about two people now, you know, relationship, okay? That Christ is the real centerpiece, the foundation of the relationship. But even if there's just one, God says to solitary in families, even if there's just one true love, that other person, persons, businesses, whatever, they'll know it's real. 
They'll know it's not counterfeit. They'll know it. Because why the light of Christ is shining through you. Please come, priest. In and this is a situation, church. That dissimulation can happen to any one of us. But that's why Paul again was saying in Romans, let love be without dissimulation, meaning it's true. Brother Marlon, Sister Mary, and I laugh and cheery at times because when we're walking away from each other every once in a while, they'll say, We love you. And we mean it. And we laugh about that. We love you. And we mean it's because we've been told by so-called Christians, oh, we love you. And then get gutted like a pig. You've been there. Don't tell me you haven't. That's the world that has a mask on. But glory to God not for the true believer because the cross of Christ will humble you and I again and again and again that we know we're nothing without the blood being applied. And the true blood being applied is love. Love held him on that cross, church. Not those nails. Oh, when you apply the blood, when you apply the cross, when your faith is anchored in the finished work of Christ, opening the Holy Ghost up for that love to flow. And then it's going to flow like the current he was talking about. It flows in and it flows right back out. Now church, what I just said today is not for graduation. You see, it's not like Tate a few weeks ago graduating. He's got his little certificate and now he's ready to live on with life. Spiritually, it don't work that way. We're a work in progress. In other words, today, here comes another problem tomorrow or whatever the case. That same blood that's applied today, you're justified by your faith. You're justified tomorrow. But my faith is anchored in Christ that that sanctifying peace will come upon me. And when somebody does you wrong, I'm not saying you're going to like it, and I'm not saying go up and give a big kiss either. That's not what pastor's saying. Okay? The pastor is saying, just like Jesus on that cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that sets you free. That sets you free. It don't set them free. You're giving them to God. You're turning it over to the Lord. You said it earlier. We God is the healer. He's the healer in everything, not just one area of your life. He is your healer in all areas of life. Amen? Amen. Whatever it is this morning, I just want you to go to the Lord. If you want me to pray with you, I'd be honored to pray with you. But is there something here in the love that's not right with you. There's a relationship out there that's not right. There is things that you know are not in alignment with the will of the Father. Take it to Him this morning, please. Let us pray together. Lord, touch us. We surrender.
must remember that God has the answer for all that ails mankind. Some of you at home, there may be some in this sanctuary. I don't know why really the Lord gave me this message, but He did. There may be somebody at home you've been abused by somebody you trusted. You may have been abused in a horrible, horrible way by a counsel with several over the years. The Bible tells us that we must forgive them. You must forgive them. There's no other option. And you see, though, you can't do it. You may be thinking that right now, Pastor. I can't forgive them what they did to me. I hope they rot in hell. They get hit by a truck. You see, you're in bondage. They've still got you in bondage, whether you realize it or not, all these years, months, whatever, how long ago it was, you're still in bondage because the memories are just going over and over and over again. I'm not saying that you're never going to forget but the Lord Jesus Christ can take the sting out of it only he can do that and if you said Lord I'm struggling turn it over to him he knows if you're being honest or not he knows the intents and thoughts of the heart he knows the pain and he wants to take that pain he wants to take it away. Let him take it. You can go to counselors till you're blue in the face and you ain't got a nickel left to your name. But that stain is going to hurt. But he is the one that takes and removes the stain of it. The blood is still enough. The blood is still enough. And I challenge you, Take me at my word, if you will. The only reason why I can say that is because I'm reciting God's word. He can take the hurt and the pain away. There are so many bondages that Satan tries to attach to us. But Jesus is the chain breaker. I don't care what the chain is. It doesn't matter what it is. Our God is able. If you will give it to him, trust him today by faith and say Lord this load is too heavy he said come unto me all you labor and heavy laden I will give you rest he is the rest he is the Sabbath day rest and every day is the Sabbath for the child of God and the new covenant will you take it him today no matter what it is and allow that agape love the true love of God to come in the peace of God that passes your intellectual understanding. You won't understand it. But it's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost working inside you to give you that sanctifying, that restful peace because you're resting in His work, not your work. That's why we work so hard and we never get rest because we're placing our faith in our works. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And we don't get rest because we're not resting in Him and what He did at Calvary's cross ready to leave this morning. Hope you were blessed. I know I was. We didn't even come close to scratching the surface on this message. But that's okay. <clears throat> My favorite part, the times of just sitting back praising God. Just praising the Lord. Just, just that He accepts our praise. It should make you thankful enough that He accepts the praises of the inhabitants the praises of his children. Those of you at home, wherever you are, when we say we love you, we mean it. We do. No matter what the issue is, God is greater than all your fears. God is greater than all your tears. God is greater than anything that comes against you. If you will trust him today, tomorrow, not do this. It is a
fixed position in Christ, you're justified. And you continue to look to Him daily. He will give you that rest and that refreshing. Amen? Amen. Does anybody else have anything this morning? somebody is. At least somebody's praying for me. Yes. I got a Lord who spoke to me with the fellow. So stand in for all. Don't preach me. Just lost the Just cast him out for this. And then he has lost his God all the same day. I don't need no one to too many people to lost his
you. It will touch him. It will lift him up, oh God. Strengthen him, Father. Oh, Lord, these needs in this house and those that are watching. Lord, you are the Lord that healeth thee. Lord, there are needs, every one of your children. <clears throat> we all have needs. We are needy creation. But Lord, we bring them to you today. Whatever they may be, Lord, touch us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we surrender that need unto thee today. Your blood is sufficient for all of our needs. You said at Calvary, it is finished. Oh Lord, we have not because we ask not. Lord, we're asking, <laughs> we're seeking, we're knocking. We're asking this morning. Thank you. 